business analytics add value to business organizations through the insights through the predictions through the optimizations what is the meaning of this insights prediction and optimization for the value additions defense sites when we talk about the insights we are basically talking about what exactly is happening with the business is something changing is something improving is something going down what are the major attributes of the business analytics and the problem then the prediction what can happen in the future will this consumer come will this customer shop will this repay the loan will this medical run then that is the predictions and optimization is are trying to put the things into the business actions insights into the actions we need to optimize them as an example when we are trying to see that this company will will come and shop during the sales period we will be trying to put into the actions this should be customers should be targeted should be communicated we are communicating them the ultimate objective is to powerful enough should be simple enough should be understandable so we try to components of the communications to reach to the business consumers so that the information is passed and there is no complexity in between as a example in between when we are trying to communicating between the customers via the sms and we are trying to put the offer the link and the users click that off link and then yes we can getting this offers but if there is a broken link the consumers will not be able to even after the clicking and get not get the informations about them so that will be leading to the cus- drop of the customer because of the broken link and he is not getting the information so this should be optimized and the final the consumers will get the informations what he can see and what we want him to see all this clean should be clean analyzed and optimized using the analytical techniques when we are solving about a business analytical problem we need to develop about the business understandings and and, and what the team takes into the pictures it is all about addressing about what the problems we are trying to and what efficiency it can bring and it is little bit about the different critical thinking critical thinking is about when we are solving the things with respect to the business if there are critical component or not but the analytical thinking is mostly relating to the data what exactly is the data and how you can leverage that into the data so within that into the case studies business problems and ultimately lead to the right decisions making to to see the cons- basic concept on differences of critical thinking and analytical thinking is that there are two concepts if people need to see that if people are critical thinking analytically then they are thinking about the critical thinking and if vice versa but there are basic gaps between the analytical thinking and the critical thinking to summarize the difference between the two uh, analytical mindset analytical thinking as the organized way of thoughts as an example data will come this way data will be leveraged out data will be cleaned this way data will be consolidated this way and ultimately use the information can be used this way in the informations and you can use this way in communicating the results whereas in the critical thinking it is open minded there is no sequence this can happen that can happen or this can happen all these things can scattered in a scattered informations in the analytical thinking we try to stitch them together in the in interpretation of informations uh, is information is useful for understanding the certain events and explaining the patterns and the trends in the analytical thinking we try to arrange in the thinking in such a way that uh, what can happen in such a way and what how can happen and what can happen and when can happen but the critical thinking nothing is being critical and nothing is being considered applicable and accurate you are not having with the critical evidences people will be thinking about the critical thinking are the major consumers but we are thinking in the analytical thinking you are thinking that 25 to 30% to 35% of the use to contribute this way to 30 the percentage of the sale it gives you a weight it gives you a measure that doesn't happen in the critical thinking mm, key tools mind maps flow diagrams mathematical tools analytical tools like the python and, uh, and they are the basically the tools don't confuse between the tools and analytics 
Python is not an analytics. Python is the tool that helps you to leverage you the ultimate data and help in solving the business data case studies. All these are tools mm, like um, find out um, the business problems. Whereas in the critical thinking, you try to solve the problems using the brainstorming thinking as an example. You are trying to example understand what can consumer which will buy, which will show up during the sales period. When we are trying to go and the details into the concept will already will start with the critical thinking. In the critical thinking, you will try to identify which are the areas which we should analyze to understand whether the consumers will buy or not buy. If the consumer is coming in the three times, then he is coming to the number one here. If the consumer is spending more than 50,000 rupees, then he is more likely to shop, which is shopping for less than 50,000. If the consumer shops at least for once in the last three sales period, he is likely to sell more into the sales more. He doesn't sell during the sales period. If the customer um, using the discount coupons into every transactions, um, getting the data into the more sales, and then the consumers who is not using the coupons. So these are the critical thinking components. We are trying to stitching them together and arranging them in such a way, the variables that to leads to the analytical problem solving. These are the variables and uh, will be taken out, data will be taken, analytical thinking will be applied, prediction will be, algorithm will be applied and you will be using this data um, for shops and then the other consumers. So that is the consumer, that is the things. And once we are trying to understand the analytical thinking, then how we can you develop such things. When we are developing the analytical thinking, through the solving the business problems, we need to understand how data can be leveraged out, out and we can thinking ourselves. Do we need to ourselves? Do we need to others then more? Do we need to think beyond the capacity? Mm. So it is basically all about the facts findings of the data. It is reading about the correct scenarios, correct scenarios, correct trends and understand the biasness and putting all these things in the structure form. Mm. When we are thinking about all these forms, we need to identify and understand mm. an analytical thinking development. It's a component no, that we need to the analytical component with ourselves. We need to identify in such a way that if we are in a structured way. Mm, problem is there, we need to solve them. There we need to understand the business understandings and business understandings and this can happen in a number of events. We will need to arrange them. This can be data collection, this is the data cleaning, prediction algorithms, algorithm into the business trends, all these trends in the structure manner and ultimately leads to the solutions of the business problems and all these things how the things will happen in the future. When we talk about the business analytics, it is not a single attribute or the single thing. Business analytics is the component of various things where every step is important. Every step leads to the solutions to the other problems. Output of one problem leads to the input of the other problems and vice versa. And it is arranged in a sequential way. If one thing is go wrong, everything will go wrong. So it starts with the data. Everything starts with the data. Similarly, business data will be starting about the business data. What how we will be collecting the data? And you will be collecting the data and aggregating it. And aggregating it. When we say about the people who will be finding out during the sales period, we are need to understand what are the brainstorming the things, how, whether it will be creating the bias and non-bias. So we will be collecting all these variables. This is the age group where most of the people buy during the sales period. The person who is either 45 age of age or between the 25 to 35 age of the are more likely to buy during the sales period. These are the first variables that we have. People who have high frequency throughout the year, then they are more likely to buy during the sales period. This is the second variables who have. The person is spending more than 50,000 rupees every year is the more likely to consumer. This is what the variables we have. So this will be collecting all these variables and aggregating them in a single data set. A single data, all these components, attributes of the consumers 
so that this will be utilized in a single database where all this information is available and that final data sets will be further utilized for analyzations so data aggregation is the first part i didn't do the aggregation i have done collected the data and this is the first component of the outcomes then this outcome will go to the second part once the fish will go to the data mining data mining i will dealing the data i will torture the data to speak the truth who will happen how exactly it will happen who will show up with us um, in this mining status we will find out the patterns we will be finding out the trends we will be finding out the things that can happen under various scenarios as an example person who spends around 25 to 100 to 3500 in one single transaction has Two percentage of chances of buying more than the person who has less transactions business value. So all this component business value will be find out during the mining, during the analytical thinking, during the analytical thinking to find out the weight of the business components and by which it will be impacting on the final outcome. So all these things will be happening in the mining status, and then we'll be finding out the sequences. about if the consumer is spending this 2500 this well then he comes then he can come into the 3500 rupees and if he has developed a value of 50000 in a single year or if he spends the 50000 in a single year and he comes in the two months and he after every third transactions he is doing the bigger transactions so all these are you know, the frequent sequential transactions so all if you are trying to identify this happens you know, data is collected data is mined data is um, identified the sequences that a consumer is behaving this way then you will be optimizing it optimizing it using the data output of the steps we did into the do the optimizations we need to did the 100 transaction 100 customers divided by the size so every um, decide value concerns the 10 consumer out of the 10 100 consumers so 10 mm, the top decisions will be any cost and then the few consider will be little push and the lower will be not going to show up with us even if you do anything so these are the people like to do the shop so we try to communicate this risks to the business stakeholders we will divide the, the whole scenarios and they say that um, these are the 10 types of customers divided by the whole consumer base into the 10 groups the 10 the top group is that more likely to shop and the bottom is that which is less likely to shop, frequent to shop and we even in the push they i will not come or they make the extreme push or the very big office or the very big um, office then only they can shop if we have having that budget then they can push it out if they have budget constraint let's look for the top people all these such things are the components of the business analytics so when we have the business analytics we go step by step we go um, each of the component into the details the first is the data aggregations we need to try to collect the data we need to clean the data cleaning data means why do we need the data the basic important metrics is that metric if the data goes wrong then everything can goes wrong and we don't want to take that risk that's why the cleaning is a very important component i suppose most of my 80 consumers spends that 50000 to 1 lakh rupees to and most of the consumers can buy between the 50000 to 1 lakh and i suppose there are 1 to 2 percentage of the consumers who is spending less than 5 lakh to 10 lakh rupees in the single transactions if we see to try to see the whole data this few 1 percentage of the consumers will shift a pattern will shift the average value now if average value will be the normal higher than the normal value so if my usual every transaction spends more than 1 lakh my average value should be um, about 1 lakh and i might tell you most of the my consumers who buys more than 1 lakh rupees in a single transaction which is a problem 
there are many problems the one transaction to transaction who does all this but they can impact over the whole data points so that's why this is called the whole outliers and they're not the usual consumers they're the outliers consumers who by outlight the they do we want to take them out or do we want to manage them differently let's there are top consumers do not consumer as a what we do like the, the for the other consumers so this cleaning of the required is required there are the consumers who are buying duplicated so, there is one consumers who uses the tools like the two email ids some times some times it shop with one email id and sometimes with the second email id the first email id has fan value of the 50000 rupees and the other email id has the 10 lakh rupees so we will be trying to identify if that is the consumer or not if that is one duplicated for one and we might end up with um, different patterns into the duplicate c records duplicate series and we want to filter them out mm, which is inaccuracy or some sign inaccuracy we need to filter them out if that is something missing information mm, if so if the age is the important factor to us mm, with respect to the consumers and if we don't have the age value for n number of people then we are not able to identify if that age will be impacting or not if respecting age with the communication either we can communicate with them no so that is the missing information that we can leverage out we can utilize them or change the informations either you can fit in some values or default some values or you can remove some value to the outcome but we need to take some 10 actions ultimate objective will be to final data sets which will be further used for analyzing the business modeling output creations and for further enhancements the mm, data should be clean and data should be proper the aggregation shall be of the two types mm, there are transaction with the, uh, so I, the, the transaction we do with the one trans record now every data will be transaction into one record which gets into the fashion with the other record so that is the proper records that has the proper structure that are the proper variables and we can easily clean them and the, which are the volunteer data the volunteer data could be the data which is randomly collected data sources so for example the feedback data that is the feedback the random data you can take the feedbacks you can identify and whether that feedbacks takes a major role and if such data is available you need to leverage out and you can clean them out Mm, so that it can be cleaning them for the proper appropriate manner so once your data is completed and your data aggregation is completed you need to mm, put it for the data mining you need to find out the data mining you need to insights of the data patterns of the business data you need to see what can happen with this and what can we do with the data so that there are various analytical techniques we can use here mm, and these analytical techniques are implemented using the certain analytical patterns like the pattern asura and which method is using um, which are equally using for these components are equally good enough and these are uh, open for use any tools and your objective should be you should be able to implement them in a statistical way for leveraging out the information with the data so okay when you are talking about data mining and the data collections your ultimate output will be finding out the results whether if broader terms are divided into various formats so for an example we might be find out whether this is viable or not so if you are trying to understand if we'll buy or not so that is the classification that this person will buy this person will not buy it is the classification of the two classification is generally happens when um, outputs and we are used um, and user will be falling in one of the output as an example this person will repay the loan or not yes or no that is a classification yes or no then there are five categories who can buy into the business patterns which will be the five consumer pattern categories where the consumers will buy or not there are five categories are available and every consumer will be targeted in one of the following it's classification algorithm and those algorithms when the output has the fixed components and your old data will be 
and consumers will be uh, and to everything and the components or to one of the categories of the final outcomes the final outcome should have the limited number of categories and here the those output to the different categories and then that is the classification algorithm so the classification algorithm is the key comp algorithm which are used to find out the problems to give you one example um, if the um, sales or not is the classification algorithm outcome will be yes or no against every consumer you will be finding out one consumers who's um, yes he will buy he will buy or not he will buy yes or no so either yes or flag no if yes flag is there then this person is likely to decline during the sales period if that sales is then no no then this person will not sell during the sales period then there are other kinds of techniques like the regressions regression is basically regressing yourself into finding out the output we are trying to identify how much this will be happening you will be able to manage it's not a classification algorithm because it's not a defined component to which it is taking the data okay you can the sales can be 100 rupees or the send 100 crore rupees or 50 crore rupees or 1 crore rupees we are not it's not a fixed transactions or the fixed value we are not able to say that one crore two crore three crore or four crore these are not a fixed numbers there are numbers who are not able to define in few categories so the outcome will be considered to be the regression categories so this kind of regression algorithms are known as the regressions and these are very very important concept because this also helps you identify those values which are not able to define into the categories so as an example if i am this this month this much of month next month how much will be so if i get into the sales value to get that sales value will i make this sales value will be in the continuous form of data the continuous form of data means if we don't have the fixed categories the output can be any number okay so we can be able to using that data you will be able to find out the value it can be 100 crore 50 crore 6 crores or 1 crore it can be anything using this some values we will be able to find out the values and out, outcomes and you can be able to predict and which can be anything and that output will be considered as a regression output so in a classification my final output can be in the form of the categories it will be falling in one of the categories which are predefined maybe yes or no and regression my final outcome will be continuous number it can be anything any number and any number and the third of the third time of categories that is used in business analytics is the clustering as an example this if we don't have the final output or we are not sure about the final outcomes how we'll be using them there are different kinds of algorithms use them and these algorithms are known as clusterings to you the simple example let's suppose uh, i belong to the people communication company and in that com telecommunication company there are several sets of consumers who uh, uses these kinds of plans i will be the consumer who will be the calling people and so i will be using the minutes um, there will be some people of people who are completely dependent on the data so they don't care what kind of talk time they don't care what kind of sms but they are using only for the data um, there are only people who will be using for the sms's uh, who will be you know, interested in both the calls and sms's there will be few consumers who will be interested in both the calls as well as the data um, here we don't know the what outcome will look like and what are the different kinds of the groups that we will be getting so these problems are using using the data mining techniques which is the, the clustering when it start the clustering you set the whole data you try to deal it out and ultimately reach out to the group wherein every group is different from each other's one group let's see out of the trailing mining you can be able to take the data we can be data user there is a calls and sms users and the third is you choose this everything in an equal proportion when we'll be using it for the final outcomes your objective will be these are the sets of the people who uses both calls and data sms's so let's give them this package with the plans which is supported by calls as well as the sms's these are the people consumers who use the data more 
so gives them the internet package so we can keep them consistent these are the sex of the consumers who will be taking more call um, or packaging so use them for the calls so okay so this uh, how the business decisions is being made using the analytical techniques the clusters was used on the data um, to find out the business patterns how many no matter how many groups but the um, groups when we decided that become the classification when the groups are not being decided you don't know the outcomes that becomes the clustering algorithm when your final outcome comes and your whole divided data into the groups you can create the cluster for each of the groups so these are the components of the business analytics then there are the other components which are sequence identification you need to identify the sequence what exactly is happening how and you can associate with the things there are several variation takes like the Mm, few of them are associations associations when you talk about there are techniques like the market basket analytics similar techniques which are used when you are using the association techniques like the market basket analytics you will be able to understand what are the patterns are able to understand how this pattern will go together so as an example everybody who buys for the bread and the butter also buys for milk okay so here the associations so if everyone is buying for bread and butter that will be bread for bread and butter and also will be buying for milk so if you can use this consumers who will be like how many people will be buying bread butter but then bread milk so if you give them the offer or give them the boost to buy milk from us we will give you the additional sales so we know milk goes with the bread and butter and this people who are not buying with us so we can have the opportunity there so um, mapping this associations we will be able to understand which consumers can be targeted with respect to the association rules then there are text mining rules who has the feedbacks so as an example give me one example who um, text mining Oh, so our feedbacks are collected, and our consumers are saying, the, the, uh, "This product is good. This product is bad," and um, those are completely random words. Mm, when the words are random, um, there is no word scenario, so there is no sequence data structure. So text is completely scattered. As an example, the Facebook is completely Twitter, or the Twitter tweets. There is no some proper words. There is no synchronizations. People can write anything. So if you find out the data patterns, you need to understand the text. You need to find out the text. You need to clean the text. You need to clean arrange, and you need to see which words are used in the one word or another. When you are trying to somebody good like the good thing of the product or the bad thing of the product, you will be mining the data and then ultimately converting it into classification algorithm where the feedback of the product can be good or bad. Text mining is the one of the business analytics mining which are usually readily available these days, and there are various components are available where you can be finding out the feedbacks from them who can use the text mining techniques to clean the data and then ultimately find out the outcome. Then there are forecasting techniques. Forecasting techniques actually tells you about what can happen in the future. Mm, oh, every two weeks, my sales are decreasing my sales amount. Mm, and so in the next future, we can go by X amount plus X amount. Then there are predictive analytics techniques, which we could address like the regressions or analytical techniques like the decision tree or random focus all these are algorithms which are predict analytics where we are predicting the future like we as if now if my x number of consumers are buying like this many apv values so what can be the sales so all these are the predictive algorithms where we are trying to algorithms for the future algorithms so all these are the components of the algorithms of the business analytics then comes the optimization optimization comes basically to find out where we need to clean when we need to clean arrange optimize the data where we need to remove the roadblocks road so as an example if suppose if someone buys from the e-com channels where some products are shopped if in, if in suppose my i uh, uh, warehouse 
at the three different places mm, and I can get offers or orders from anywhere then we need to optimize we need to send the products from the mm, warehouse to the closet that is being that is being very close to where we can deliver so we can save the cost of the transportation of the product all this can be happen all this clean analyze using the business analytics techniques so this can optimize mm, and our sale mm, more sales can be converted and we can avoid the various risk factors and various extra costing factors once we do all these factors then comes with the visualization part visualization is the um, ethnic uh, important part because that happens everywhere when we'll be taking the data or everywhere and you will be using the data analyzing it you need to visualize the data you need to find out the trends where you can take the statistical proper models statistical models when you're trying to build out the models you will be using the business how the business algorithms are working using the different output once your final output is created and the model is created you can generate the output then also the visualization becomes the important pattern because mm, you then you will be explaining the reasons to the stakeholders so the visualization is the extreme extreme important component of the business analytics so it happens everywhere you can help you to understand the patterns it helps to understand the business patterns to understand the patterns outcomes you will be understanding your outputs are working as per the expectations